Hello there old chums, welcome to 80 Mods of Ark, a delicious tale of exploration across the Ark Survival World world. Today is JPG, she's a renowned explorer that crash landed on a mysterious island, but just like all good survivors she learned to master the island until she came across a mystery, a massive humongous mystery, a huge flying sort of airship. What could this airship be? She'd never seen something so huge or so monstrous. Now JPG had looked up in advance the lands that she would be travelling across and she knew there was no people capable of building such fine craftsmanship and something that had such awe-inspiring mechanics. So who was piloting this ship? What were their intentions? Sit back, relax and let me recount the tale of Captain 50s and the ship wildcard. Whilst we must start at the beginning, after a crash landing from her own airship, JPG set about gathering resources as she had always done previously, it wasn't long before she'd got herself on her feet and back to normal with some home comforts. She built herself a little encampment and started right away on the necessary machinery to build her own hot air balloon. She was well versed in engineering and knew the mechanics of steam inside and out. So with a little reflection about what had happened, about the many months that had passed while she had survived and gathered and built, she soon set off with a final goodbye to all the apparatus and the items she'd constructed. Steam had served her well and now it was going to be her escape and hopefully resolving the mystery of the massive airship that had appeared. She off she went fearlessly into the sky of the unknown land. Other than the name of the lands, ISO was all she knew about where she had been marooned. Piloting the air balloon was no mean feat, staying up for countless hours on her home, trying to find a good place to settle down for the evening. She ventured far and wide across the lands, coming across many, many different types of biomes and wondrous areas. She dimly recalled reading some ancient texts referring to the land as the Crystal Isles, but forever in her mind it would be the Iso Lands, named after the first explorer to discover these wild and mysterious country. JPG scoured day and night for that mysterious airship, going far and wide across the ISO lands. She had absolutely no clue where it had disappeared. The only place she had thus not explored was the volcano. Could it be the airship had made it its home? And yes, she was correct, it had, looking like an angry monster or leviathan coming out of the actual lava. There was the huge, huge airship. It was a wondrous sight, she'd never seen such craftsmanship. How had they built such a massive thing and how had it flown? She was given permission to land by some signals from some of the crew on her deck. She soon landed and went to greet whoever the mysterious captain of this fine vessel was. JPG was hesitant at first, no matter the captain's intentions. Her armed men were very menacing indeed. What could they be doing on this airship out so far away from civilization? What were the captain's intentions? They greeted her in kind, and at first everything seemed okay. The captain proceeded to ask JPG lots of questions about how she had ended up on the ISO lands. She told him about her journey, about the crash land, and how she built herself up over many, many months to where the state she was now that she had her own mini airship. The captain welcomed JPG and proceeded to explore and show her the rest of the wildcard ship, including some amazing creations and fantastical research. It turns out the captain's a bit of a scientist, in fact a biologist, as well as a human and animal DNA specialist. He had been crafting for long years a way to spawn and basically make his own dinosaurs and creatures. Not only that, but he found a way to make them whatever size he wanted to. This could be wondrous for the scientific community. 
He showed me so many extraordinary creatures that had been miniaturized, living inside their own aquariums or habitats. There were some scary repercussions of this though. The way that he had the actual DNA being drafted and how it was creating these small baby dinos truly was a bit scary. What were his intentions? Why was he really doing this? He explained it was for the overpopulation of the art lands and to help resolve food shortages. Captain 50s explained his actual idea more in detail. By shrinking the world's population and its animals, he would save the Ark from itself. Pollution would not be such a concern. There wouldn't be a worry about running out of food or resources as they could miniaturize all the creatures and all the humans. It really was some outstanding, interesting work. JPG was inquisitive about the amount of battle dinos the captain had on his ship. Considering he was meant to be a scientist, he had a lot of armaments and weapons. The captain explained that to provide security for his scientific needs, he did need such a large security force, and that it was normal. JPG wasn't totally convinced. Why would you need such a heavy arsenal of battle dinos if you were just a scientist? She tried to get some information from the second in command, Steady Teddy, but he was a simple fellow and didn't give JPG much information other than just to cheer at every other word. It soon became nighttime and JPG was offered the chance to tour the ship while it was in its nighttime state. It truly was a beautiful spectacle, but again it had a menacing overtone to it with all the red amber warning lights it definitely seemed like this ship had more to it than just being a scientific vessel and JPG was determined to get to the bottom of who the Captain 50s really was and were his intentions honourable. JPG was invited onto the captain's deck where she got a chance to mingle some more of the actual crew members and take a look around what was I guess the living quarters of Captain 50s. It truly was special and unique with more aquariums with more of the smaller miniaturized creatures. After a while, JPG went to bed and cleared her mind until the next morning when she stumbled across the captain and Teddy, looking like they was in a bit of a position. So she decided to take a look outside on the actual deck and come back when the captain and Teddy were ready. More evidence that the ship was not in fact scientific came to JP's attention when she saw that there were a massive amount of turret guns armed to the teeth firing something. She had never seen actual turret guns like this. What were they there for? She decided it was time to get some answers. Over the course of the morning, she started to speak to the captain. The captain outlined his vision for a future, a future where humanity lived in ships like these, across the skies, where they were miniaturized, where people had enough resources to last them, and that where dinosaurs and other creatures would not die out from extinction. Captain 50 showed JPG around the rest of the ship, including lots and lots of different rooms and where they conducted lots of their research and worked on the apparatus that was needed to function to host and house all these miniaturized creatures. Came across a very cute Jaboa by the way. Captain 50 offered to give the Jaboa as a prize, but JPG refused. She got a chance to see the crew members working up close with gene splicers as well as some more complicated workbenches. It truly was some astounding work being conducted. There was that worrying sign that lots of weapons and armaments were being made also though. What were they there for? The captain wouldn't answer other than just to say for protection. But for protection from what? The crew members were very happy in their surroundings. Their actual settings, their actual living quarters were quite luxurious. And it was nice to see that they were treated very well. The captain 50 seemed to appreciate his crew members very greatly, particularly Steady Teddy. Even with lots of food and lots of resources, as you could well imagine, with their ability to shrink things, they were able to also make things bigger. And that meant that they could have more resources. Steady Teddy was a fine cook in the kitchen as well. JPG ended up making a home for herself over many, many weeks, partaking in the daily life of the wildcard ship and becoming a valued crew member. She thought often about though, the intentions of the captain, and as days went by, she knew something was amiss. That didn't stop her having some fun though, and she developed a relationship with some of the crew. Captain 50 showed JPG many sites and talked to her about the histories of the greatest explorers, including Rockwell, one of the most renowned across the Ark lands. JPG also took note of the heavy turret guns, again lining the decks of the ship wildcard. 
More and more she was starting to think that something really was not quite right with Captain Fifties. He seemed a lot more dishonourable than he let on. Captain Fifties showed JPG the run into the ship and even showed her how to pilot and control it. He seemed to be very proud of his workmanship and obviously it was a great sight to behold. Such wonderful craftsmanship, such wonderful detail put into this fantastic build. After many many weeks, Captain Fifties announced they would be going to land to their base they had built on one of the floating islands. The base was every bit of a wonderment just like the ship wildcard. It had so much things going around, so many different avenues and the architecture of the builds was fantastic. Again there was lots of scientific equipment on there. It was when JP realised something. Lots of the actual workshops, lots of them were designed to harvest, that's what she'd come to the conclusion of. But what were they harvesting? She knew there was energy sources, there must be something to power these great big airships. She thought it was steam at first, but the captain slowly started to give details about what the stuff that actually powered it. It was the crystals. The crystals were a unique power source and they gave power to everything that, that was around them. Steam would only do so much, but these crystals emitted no pollution and they were extremely valuable. At last JPG knew she was getting to the bottom of why the captain was so protective and why he had so many armaments. It wasn't just to protect his research, it was to gather these resources. Could the captain be hiding something? Why was he desperate for more of this resource? If he had enough just to fund his project, why else would he be harvesting such vast amounts of it on his factory on this floating island? Back on the ship one day, the captain finally told JPG the truth. It wasn't just for the betterment of man that he was shrinking dinosaurs and trying to find out a way to shrink humans. He wanted to control and rule the rest of the arcs and he was going to do it with the power of the isocrystals. The factories worked day and night pumping forth their slew of fire, breaking down the isocrystals into a resource that could be used as power. Not just power for his scientific experiments, but power for his vast supply of guns and ammunition that he would use to enslave the rest of the Arcs. He started out on ISO as no one had been there in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and thus far had become an unexplored land. But now he was nearly ready, now he's ready to take on the rest of the world, take on the rest of the Arcs with his armada of his ship as well as others that he had started to manufacture. It was all in the plans of the factory, it was all ready to go. This madman wasn't there to better man, he was there to enslave it and he would do so if no one stopped him. JPG knew she had to do something. She would not let Captain Fifties take over the Arcs. She would have to find a way. She bided her time. She waited until the captain had nearly everything ready and had put it on board his actual flagship, the Wildcard. And that was when she struck. She asked to speak to the captain on his deck privately and then suckered in one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, until he was actually unconscious. 
or seven or eight or nine or ten or eleven or twelve. There we go. There we go. There we go. JPG ran as fast as she could up onto the top decks, looking for some way to disable the ship. She'd thought about it, thought about maybe piloting the ship herself, but there was too many of Captain 50's men. She decided to jump on one of the great big turret guns and immediately started firing into the deck of this ship itself. And with that, she managed to disable it and set off a catalytic explosion that would tear apart the rest of the ship and possibly end her own life. One of the resulting explosions threw JPG off the bow of the ship, and she knew no more. <laughs>